Hey neighbors, today we're gonna to be talking about container gardening. What kind of containers you can use, what kind of kinds of things you can grow in those containers, how to get or make your potting soil, all that fun stuff. So let's just get right into it. First off, the potting soil I'm using today, I am mixing it myself. So it's really easy to do. I'm taking one part compost, one part perlite, and one part peat moss. I'm gonna mix them all three together. I'm making kind of a smaller batch here right now. Let's go ahead and just dump the rest of this bag of perlite in here. If you don't know what perlite is, this white kind of fluffy rock stuff. And it's really porous and what it does is it allows water and air to kind of pass through it and adds just a really airy fluffiness fluffiness to your soil all right this is pretty much mixed through at this point you don't have to do this this is extra work just less money you can also go and just get like a, a normal potting mix from any big box store you can get a potting mix or i think they they're called container mixes it is quite a bit more money especially if you're doing it large scale today i planted 60 something 60 plants in the container so for me just buying in bags was not an option but doing this saved me hundreds of dollars. The first container we're gonna talk about today is just a Lowe's bucket, and I drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom. If you have any container that's plastic and you're wondering if it's food safe or not, look on the bottom and find this number right here. So this one's a two, HDPE. You can Google that and it's gonna tell you if it's food safe or not. Some plastics are, some plastics aren't, this one is. Holes in the bottom, that's extremely important. You wanna have really, really good drainage with a container garden. So make sure you drill a lot of holes in it. The next one that we've used here today is a fabric pot. And with these, you don't have to drill any holes. These are, these are made specifically for pretty much container plants and these are really kind of unique and what what happens is the roots will grow come out to the sides of the fabric pot and they get exposed to air when they hit the side and so what happens is a thing called air pruning so the roots will grow they'll touch the side they'll get exposed to the air and then that part of the root will die off allow for new roots to grow out to the outside the roots never really stop growing at least compared to to other containers, which is really awesome. This will be the first year that I've actually grown in quite a few. These are seven gallon fabric pots I got on Amazon. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description below, but I'm doing five of these seven gallon pots. Next up is a tote. And these totes, I just obviously the same as the bucket, I put holes down in the bottom and I will show you guys what I'm doing with these here in just a minute. Up next, here's just a couple more totes. We actually had these ones just laying around so I didn't have to buy them. Drilled holes in the bottom of those ones, threw some peppers in there. And these ones are actually laundry baskets. So I just kind of repurposed these as pots. I think these are, I don't know how many gallons, they're quite a few gallons. So these are pretty, pretty big pots. You can grow quite a few different things in these. Last but not least, this is a garbage can. And realistically at, at this point with these, I'm just trying to grow the biggest pepper plant I possibly can. I've got this pepper in here, which is a Fatali. And then I've got this pepper here, which is a peach star kissed. And I've got a good mulch around them. That's another thing with, with container gardening, if you can. Um, get some straw mulch or maybe some wood chips or just something to put around on the soil over, over top of the plant. That just kind of helps with temperatures and helps with water retention and, and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and start talking about plants. So the first plant we're gonna do today is a pepper plant. A five gallon bucket is honestly the perfect size for a pepper plant and even a tomato plant. So those are the two main things that I'm gonna be growing in five gallon buckets. When I put the soil in here, I don't wanna compress it down too hard. It is gonna naturally go down. I'm gonna put some pressure on it a little bit, pat it down, and then leave a little bit of room in here for mulch. Like I said, it's going to settle on its own, but if you put a little bit of pressure, that's gonna kind of reduce that. So right now we've got a bucket that is you know, a few inches from the top. Let's go ahead and get this pepper plant in here, show you guys how that works. One thing that I do here is, at this point you've got halfway damp soil that's in the bucket, but it's not wet enough. And honestly, if it's halfway damp like that, you get one hot day and that's gonna be completely dry. So I'm gonna water this bucket in really, really well. And if you've never done container gardening before, you're gonna be like, what is he doing? Most of this water is gonna come out the bottom, so it's gonna go through, it's gonna fully saturate everything, come out the bottom, just leaving me with a, a, a well-saturated soil. And normally what I do is I, I do that step about an hour or two before I'm actually gonna plant. While we're waiting for the water from the five gallon bucket to kind of work its way through. This is one that I filled with water about an hour, two hours ago. So as you can see, yeah, it's really moist, but it sits out here in the hot sun all day long. This is gonna dry out really quickly. So what I'm gonna do now is grab the plant I'm gonna put in here. With this container, it's fully saturated, ready to go. And I'm gonna be planting this in here. And this is one that I've never even heard of before up until this year. And it's called ketchup and fries. And what this is, is it's a tomato plant on top. And it's crafted to do a potato plant on the bottom. A pot like this is gonna allow for the roots to expand and hopefully get some potatoes out of it. I don't know how well this plant's gonna work. I'm gonna try it out. With this, you would do this just like repotting like a house plant or something like that. So let's go ahead and dig a hole right here in the middle. Even though I completely filled this with water, I might be able to get one drop out. Let's see. Oh, I think I got one. Okay, so even though I completely filled this thing with water an hour or two ago, the water worked its way through, the excess came out the bottom, and so it's just leaving me with this nice, moist soil. 
All right, let's see here. Do we have, are there any potatoes on this? Let's check it out. And also when you are replanting or repotting, definitely kind of, you want to break the roots up. You want to work the, the roots a little bit so they're not root bound. Right there, you can see that the roots are loose they're not gonna be stuck together when they start to grow. So let's go ahead and put this right here. Normally with a tomato, I would plant it up the stem a little ways. Tomatoes will put off new roots out of the stem. But with this one, I don't know what to expect because it's half potato, half tomato. So that's planted in there. I'm gonna put the tag right here. And then one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mulch with some straw all the way around the plant. And this is gonna help with moisture retention, help with the temperature so that the soil doesn't just cook. You can get straw pretty much any country store depending on where you live i don't know if you have a country store but if you can't find straw you can get wood chips or grass or whatever it is that you have available whatever you would normally mulch a garden with so i kind of made a little bowl all the way around that plant the soil is well protected you can still see the soil down there at the base of the plant i don't want to suffocate the plant down there this is this is going to be this one is a seven pot pepper and i grew this one from seed now what i'm going to do is pull this pepper out holy cow look at those roots check that out i've i mean i've always had good root systems but this year has just blown me away and the only thing i've done different this year is I started using mycorrhizal fungi. I did a whole video on that when I first planted these so uh, go ahead and go check that out. Maybe I'll put that at the uh, end screen of this video, the mycorrhizal fungi video. But anyways, it's a symbiotic relationship that works between the fungi and your plant, and it kind of gives your roots an extension. So now I'm trying my best to break these up. So break the roots up, because what can happen is if you don't break the roots up, and I would have just set this plant in just the way it was, it, so it can act as if it's still root bound, and those roots will still just keep kind of circling around each other in that same shape that it was in the old pot. So these roots are loose. Let's go ahead and dig a hole here. You know what? I think on this one, I'm going to grab a little bit more soil. I'll be right back. Oh yeah. I feel better about that. So a little bit more soil. I'm going to dig a hole here. So now I can just grab this plant, stick it in here. Now, same thing with the mulch. Let's go ahead and do the mulch on this one as well. If you've never mulched with a compre compressed bale of straw, you're missing out <laughs> because this was the tiniest little handful, more than, more than enough. This next one is going to be super cool. So let's go talk about that one. This tote here is about a 27 gallon tote. And what I'm going to do with this is grow some potatoes. If you've never grown potatoes in containers, it's really nice because when you're done, you can just dump the container over and harvest all your potatoes. <laughs> It makes, har it makes harvest time quite a bit easier. So I've got some seed potatoes here. First off, let's talk about the soil and why I have the soil where it's at right now. So if you look, I only have about three inches of soil, maybe four inches of soil down here in the bottom, and that's all I want to get started. And what I'm gonna do is take these seed potatoes. So I'm gonna take this one here and you wanna put the chits up. So this, the little roots that you see, you wanna put those up. And I'm gonna put about six of these in this tote. That's a good one there. So I'm gonna line them up just like this. Another good one. It's always so hard for me to pick the best potatoes. <laughs> I've got my potatoes in there. Next, we've gotta add some more soil. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add about another three or four inches on top of that. Let's see what that got us. And if you noticed, I haven't watered this one in yet. I am going to, but I haven't fully watered it in. These are a little bit different than the tomatoes and the peppers. Okay, that'll be good. If you've ever grown potatoes before, you might know about hilling. Not healing, but hilling, as in you plant the potatoes and once they start to sprout, they get a, a few inches tall, you wanna put more dirt on top of them. So you kind of pile more dirt on top of them. That's why it's called hilling. Well, you can you do the same thing in containers. So right now I'm only filling these containers halfway full. These potatoes are gonna start to sprout. And once they all start to sprout, you know, two or three inches, I'm going to go and put another three or four inches of soil on top of it. And as long as I have enough room and I did this right, then I'll be able to hill it twice. So I'll put more soil on top of it after that second time. And then once the soil is to the top, you have all these really healthy roots and everything that's going to be all throughout the the soil and then at that point once your soil is to the top then you just let it grow and you let it grow naturally and you, you just let it do its thing and while it's doing its thing up on top of the soil it's going to be growing potatoes down in the soil so this is horseradish and i planted this horseradish this time last year with horseradish you don't you're not going to get a harvest the first year but there is some serious horseradish growing in here right now so it, it sat all winter long i put some mulch on it for the winter it survived the winter came back this spring and it just came back with a vengeance so i've got horseradish just growing out the wazoo over here so if you do want to do horseradish, just know that it's kind of a two-year thing. When you finally do harvest it, what you can do is instead of just harvesting the whole thing and throwing the bucket and everything away, if you leave the root material inside the soil, inside the pot over winter, put some mulch over the top of it and just kind of put it in the garage or set it aside somewhere, those roots are going to produce new plants for next year. Get it planted, let it grow all year, cut it back. So cut it down to the soil level, all the leaves and stuff, cut it back at the end of the first season put it away, put some mulch on it, and then let it grow again the next season and harvest that at the end of the second season. And then once you harvest it, 
leave that root material in the pot because that root material will come back. If you found this information useful, hit the like button and maybe give me a hey neighbor down in the comments. And after you're done doing that, go watch this video right here. And this is where I talk all about the mycorrhizal fungi that I mentioned earlier in this video.